Okay, my friends, this is Looking Glass Universe. She said she did the double slit experiment at home, trying to figure out whether light is a particle or a wave. Now, she is a teacher, a physics teacher, and she's trying to determine whether it's a particle or a wave, and she has come up with the conclusion that it is a wave and not a particle. Well, I have come up with the conclusion, and I can prove what I'm saying. It is both a wave and a particle, because it consists of a muon and an electron neutrino, the two of them together, make a photon. Alright, I'm not going to go through her whole video, but she's asking what is light? Is it a particle or is it a wave? And she proposed all kinds of different positions on this. Well, if it did this, what does that mean? If it did this and water does that, what does that mean? Well, I can show you exactly what light is, how it propagates, and how it manifests itself, and what it is actually constructed of. All right, this is the same stuff she's doing. She's sending light, and she's watching these same waves, and all of these particles are being concussed, and their fields are glowing. The glow is whenever you have field to field, and this is light going through. It has to push everybody else's field out of the way. So that's just light. Now here it's accelerating. You see that? Before you just had the wave. Well, right now, the particle which creates the wave because it has a magnetic field around it this big, it's a tiny particle, like down here, it's this big. It's got to go through the air. That's what creates a wave of all of these things concussing around it. And then it's still a particle, and as it accelerates, and you're not supposed to be able to accelerate light, that's one of the rules. Well, we obviously can do that. And this is the acceleration of the light, and, and then it explodes at the Venturi. So what has happened? We had the light wave, all right? So she's saying, no, oh, that's a wave, that's all it is. No. Now the particle itself is right there, Zzzz, right? It's coming out of the wave. Now all the other particles that are in space here and, and around this area are being concussed and they're glowing. All those little dots are glowing particles because their fields are being smashed. You hit field to field and you get glow. That's energy. That is energy and that is raw energy. Now let me just continue to explain what I'm talking about. Field particle. All right, it's wave particle. Particle hits here, it separates. What does the particle look like before it separates? Well, here it is right here. This is what happens. Coming from this direction out. The laser's going here. The venturi is here. And the venturi is nothing more than a, a, a crusher. And it's very close together. And all these fields coming down have to make it through here. And the black particles can't get through. They come bang, 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 and they bounce off. The white gets squirted through, and I will show you that. So that means we have divided the white and the black. That happens here. Let me just explain to you what a neutrino is. This is a neutrino. All right, the black and the white and the black. Okay, as it comes through, it starts to change its flavors. Now it sort of sits up sideways, and you got a white and a black and a white and a whatever. And then you also get raw true photons. These are the real photons. And they have a black and a white, which is the muon is the black, the white is the electron neutrino. Now here, they just separate, they explode. And again, I can prove this. Alright, so here it is right here. It comes down. Right there, all the black particles stay this side. All the white go through here. A minute ago, they were black and white. And they see the same thing at CERN and Fermi Lab and all the rest of them. There's the black particle which is the black particle here. There's a white particle, which is this one here, the glowy one. Now, that can shrink down to literally nothing, and it can get huge, absolutely huge. And that's exactly what happens. In the Venturi, it crushes the fields. It says, you're gonna have to crush. And it says, I'm not crushing, I'll crush you. And it pushes against them, everybody glows, both sides. And then it will flip. That's called the muon wobble, and it spins on its axis. So the forward, forward leading one glows and then it flips to the back and then the, the less charged one goes to the front. But the black ones never change. It's exactly what they say at CERN. That's exactly what this is. This is called a fixed particle. The black one never changes. This is the point particle. It has no mass that they can find. And I agree with that. It has almost no mass whatsoever. So what happens when they hit an Venturi? Well, just like I told you, here accelerates. Venturi accelerates thing. It has to. That's exactly what it does. You look it up, Venturi. Now, here it crushes the fields and squirts only the white. 
and here it is up close. The black never gets through, not, a, not even one of them, all 100% white. But the black tries to jump back in to get back to that white. They don't want to be unattached. They want to be together. That's the strong nuclear force. The black and the white is what causes electricity. That's the strong nuclear force. They want to get back together so bad that they'll they run engines, I mean car motors, and do all kinds of stuff, light lights and everything. And that's that raw energy. Now, could we tap into that? I think we might be able to. If we could just harvest it right here, right there, all you have is electricity. And that is literally electricity, not, you know, sunlight. That is electricity and because all it is electrons. They have no weight. You push those down through, uh, well, hold on a second. All right, this, this is what I'm proposing. I don't know if it'll work or not, but if she's a physics teacher and she's interested in this and she wants everybody to do experiments and she's going to explain it, Let's see if we can do something. You take this cheap little pulse, pulsed laser. B blue is the best. That's the most powerful. And then you shoot it into the Venturi. The Venturi is nothing more than a crusher. So the black is too big to get through that tiny, tiny little slit. And it just slaps that white through and it comes out of there like just blistering fast. And then it comes down here into your batteries. That's it. This is a photodiode so it comes through and it can't get back out. And then you use a little bit of this to keep this going. And it should have increased the power at, at least 200 times. They say more than that. I, I, 200 would be all right. I could go with 200. And if you put that in a little handheld carrier, that's all you need is a bunch of these lasers in there and a bunch of these little receivers. And then run it into whatever you want. You have all kinds of outlets. And if that would work, that would be pretty nice. Now this is from CERN. This is not my picture. They show photons coming apart when they smash these huge particles together. And all they're doing is smashing protons into neutrons like this. Protons, 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 neutrons. And they're smashing them and they're getting little shards of pieces, bits and pieces. Well, we didn't do that. We used light. So we started there. We started there. And then we separate them and we can see the particles come apart and then the black as well. So instead of having two big balls of solid like glass and smashing it to bits, they had two balls of all of these individual particles. So sometimes they got a big one like that. An X particle could be anything. Sometimes they got light. Sometimes they got neutrinos. Sometimes they got muons and electron showers. All right, And I can show them all, but only we used light. So we didn't have to make all this nonsense in the middle. Right? And that's it right there. Zzzzip! Bow! Separated the black from the white. That's light, so we're, we're 1,823 times smaller than a proton. Now you saw the red. This green is identical. The same photon, same neutrinos. This one's getting ready to spin. See the white at the bottom charging up? It's going to flip like that. And then that white will come in the front and, and start to absorb all the energy. That's what the muon wobble is. That's how they spin on their axis as they go forward. And you know the red is identical to the green. And here they are together both at the same time coming through a venturi. And this one's brilliantly lighted the red, I mean the green, because it's much more powerful. That's very dim and just gets pushed out of the way. And then the green reconcusses out here because it's just a much more powerful particle. It's spinning faster. And here's what happens. This is exactly the situation. Light spins. It doesn't flap like a wave. So as it spins through here, it if it's green, it's down like this. If it's red, it's way out like this. But it's spinning. Now, if it's blue, it's way down here like... And it just pushes everything out of the way. I mean, blue, we don't work with blue because it's too... too too powerful. You can't do anything with it. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is blue going through glass. And that's it. Just it's all, the, all the other electrons and particles that were in the glass have to glow a little bit because they're being, being pushed to the side. And that's just, that's just blue light. And that is powerful. Blue is very, very powerful. You see this? This is the blue coming through. Just as fast as it can be. See how tight that is? 
this is like this right here and it's going so fast that one picture takes this whole click at once so it's all the same particle but it's going so fast that down here it almost looks like it's going straight you see and you can only see one little glow there's two particles there just like the other ones the same photon now as it slows down you can see it's obviously slowing down and now you're getting a more of an openness of the, you know, it, down, it was down here, now it's coming open, 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 open. And as it does that, it drifts. You see it drifting? Now, then you can always, then you can make out the two particles. But blue is just very, very powerful compared to the other ones. Now, I showed you the blue, how powerful that is. It's, it's very hard to work with. The green, we can also separate all the black and move it, go this way, and all the white is coming this way. You see all these concussive fields? That's nothing more than white. You see no black. It goes this way. But again, the green is not as easy to work with. The red is, is um, that you can actually see the photons much easier. But all it is is slower light particles. That's all. Same particles. Same everything. All right, that's fission and that's fusion. They were attached together, they divided. They came back together, that's f fusion. Fission means to, to divide. F fusion means to come back together. Here is that raw energy. And this is what they say, muon neutrinos end up giving you sterile muons when they concuss into Cherenkov radiation. Electron neutrinos, the white one, turns into electron showers when it hits Cherenkov radiation. And there it is, there's electron showers, there's your muon showers. Well, muons don't shower, they just go on their own separate way. The electrons hit more and more and more and more electrons and they create higher and higher energies. Okay, what I have just showed you is quantum physics on the subatomic level, which is in the light realm, which is electron flood theory, my theory. This goes back many, many, many years. But I did a paper back in 2019, and a friend of mine just made these books. They don't have anything to do with me other than my research is in there. Now, this was from 2018 about all the particles that are in space. If light is a particle, which it is, space is filled with particles, and it's also filled with dust. Now, this is Yale. I went to Yale for quantum physics. I didn't have to pay them. You can go here yourself. I think there's like 28 or 48 different courses. And this is Professor Shankar. And I just went up to see what he had to say. And I went to uh, University of Geneva through Coursera. You don't have to pay them either. And I interacted with the professors and all that. And I tried to interact with them, but they turned off the, the uh, comments. No more comments. So this is the key experiments, particle wave duality. Now listen, what, the first words out of his mouth to his students is don't worry about it because you never, it's, nobody understands it. Listen to it, and I'm serious. Here's what he says. So this is a very exciting day for me because today we're going to start quantum mechanics and that's all we'll do to the end of the term. Now, I got bad news and good news. The bad news is that it's a subject that's kind of hard to follow intuitively. And the good news is that nobody can follow it intuitively. Uh, Richard Feynman, one of the big uh, figures in physics, used to say no one understands quantum mechanics. So in some sense, the pressure is off for you guys because I don't get it and you don't get it and Feynman doesn't get it. The point is, here's my goal right now. I am the only one who doesn't understand quantum mechanics. In about seven days, all of you will be unable to understand quantum mechanics. Then you can go back and spread your ignorance uh, everywhere else. Uh, that's the only legacy a teacher can want. So. All right, well, he was being cute, but he's, that's true. All right, there can be absolutely no denying these are electron showers. And these are the sterile muons. Okay, as I showed you, we can create electron showers. We don't have to do proton, proton, high energy hadrons and collisions and decay into hadrons. We started with electrons and muons. That's where they want to get down to. And then the energy of the neutrinos interacting within this big, huge monster they created can give 100 gigavolts to a few trillion electron gigavolts, electron volts. All right, this is what they want to be down into this realm where we are. 
but they want to do it by using high energy gigantic particles it makes no sense whatsoever they want to get that white particle this is what it's all about you see this CMOS imaging now this is 2021 but they were going back to 2014 we were using the CMOS in the Galaxy Samsung phones Galaxy S3 fabulous phone and it would pick up these individual light photons which I've been showing you so we have to change everything we've been thinking all right at the LHC they did these laser experiments where they tried to create electron showers and apparently they did to some degree now here's their data all right let me find it here well you just saw, saw those showers and this is what they wanted to do is to create these energy neutrinos to give these big values and the neutrinos are the muons and the electron neutrinos exactly what I'm showing you it's exactly what I'm showing you muon electron showers come from muon electron neutrinos and there they are right there so as far as I'm concerned that's that's the end of it but let's get a little deeper because I can show you their results showing that we should be able to get high energy and if we can get high energy we can power that little device I'm talking about okay so let's recap I got called away here we have created the electron showers there they are right there electron showers I know I've told, gone through this the muon neutrino electron neutrino same thing they're trying to do at, at all the big labs but we did it for virtually for nothing there's the particle there's where it separates that's fission that's fusion and that's solar is to that now what did we do we kept the muons which are these here you see this these are muons we kept them away they can get they get slammed up bang 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 the electron showers came through now this is not my stuff this is from uh, I think Lawrence Livermore but they understand that if we can create these low energy showers coming through and then they go into high energy showers because they're banging up against each other and they don't want to be next to each other that's what creates energy is the impact of fields you never really collide particle to particle it's always field to field and that's what's called the cashmere effect look it up now they're doing the same thing we're doing only they're just doing it by accident trying to hit something to make energy they're not going to do that it's not going to create energy because they're not forcing the fields together the fields when they force together that's where your energy comes from and that's again if we get that right here which we can I know we can all we need to do is put some kind of a harvester here this is the signature of energy is, is, is luminosity it started with almost no energy of it all here and here it's just subatomic nuclear explosion and that is literally what happened fission and fusion that's and it's in the sub subatomic nuclear range it exploded but it's not going to hurt you and then you could plug it if you had them in here you could have enough to put all the energy you'd ever need I, as far as I'm concerned if you can just squirt raw energy raw electrons just squirt them out and it, it appears that that's the case once they come down into wherever you need them, either you just run them right into your devices or you just collect them in a battery. But it's, it, it runs 24-7. It's not like what you just do one shot and then you have to go for a week before you charge it back up or anything. You just keep the thing running. It just goes zzzz all day long. And it's solid state. There should be no real issues with it. Now see here they talk about entangled photons. Well, they're seeing the showers and then they're seeing the muons. It's not really anything entangled there. Oh, well, they are entangled. They're part of each other. They're part of each other. You see? So, yeah, they're entangled. That's a gluon. That's a gluon. They're like two different bar magnets stuck together. That's a photon. But when it comes through the, the venture, the black can't go along with his white partner. And if you watch this, the nuclear atomic bomb blast, you'll see the white particles burn the house down and it just smokes. And then a second later, boom, the house goes flying. Because that's when the black catches up with the white. The white is always encrusted around the black. The black separates itself, literally. It goes to the center of mass. That's why we've never seen it. It's always encrusted with the stuff that bounces back at us, which is the electrons.